Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new Minecraft building tutorial video. Now this video is going to be a tutorial on how to build a small Japanese tea house. As you can see, this is my uh, YouTube creative Japanese world so you can see other buildings in the background. I hope you don't mind that. If you uh, think that a good idea would be to make a new world for every single one of these so you can see all the buildings on their own. Make sure to comment down below. But I think I like seeing the other builds in the background. If you want to figure out how to build any of the buildings in the background, make sure to check the annotations that will probably be on screen now. And also, uh, there, there'll be a playlist. So go to, go to the playlist on my channel for this. But anyway, as you can see, what's happening in the background right now is the first step, which is going to be uh, making a small pond. Because this building is on a small pond. Try and get a pond about the same size as this. If you can't do that, just build the building first and then maybe build a pond under it. That would be hard, but you can try and do that. I'm going to make this pond one block deep uh, just for the sake of the build because I didn't want to make this video too long. But anyway, instead of rambling on while this pond carries on being built on screen, as you can see right here, I shall fast forward this bit and I will see you in the second step. Also, by the way, I do do a little bit of landscaping in this as well, just to make the surrounding area look a bit nicer and fit in with the pond. But yeah, let's just carry on to the next step. You probably won't need to do this on yours, on your build. But if you want to, you can. Obviously, just, just follow what I'm doing. Try and do something similar. Obviously, your landscape will not be the same. So yeah, again, let's fast forward this bit and get on to actually building the tea house. And here we are, I'm starting to actually build the tea house right here. As you can see, you want to make sure the tea house is one block above the water, not in the water, not too high above the water, just one block above the water. We will be making some supports later on, so it doesn't just look like it's floating. But as you can see, you need to build a small wooden, oak wooden plank platform, four by six, and you just need to fill it in to get the floor. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just filling this in to make sure the floor of the house is there. I think it's four by six. Just double check the video uh, to make sure that that is correct. Again, I do think it's four by six though. And also we just start this, the third step, which is to build up some little pillars. And then as we do with all our other Japanese houses, I just went to throw away my diamond sword there. As we do with all our other Japanese houses, make sure to place down your white wool to get the main configuration and the main body of the house pretty much done. We will be doing a lot more detailing later, but this is just kind of the start of it. And now that we've finished with the wall, the next step is to place two birch doors down as the entrance. And then what you need to do is simply make a very small bridge, as you can see here. You'll, you can adapt this to your surroundings, but I like this size of bridge, so I, uh, I kind of built it and then had to do a bit of landscaping, so I'm just going to fast forward. But yeah, the, all you need to do is make a simple little bridge like this. It really adds to the overall build. And yeah, I'll fast forward this bit. Okay, so we're not fully finished with that bridge. We will come back to it later. But the next step is to, as, you, as I do with pretty much all of my other Japanese buildings, place outward facing logs on all of the main log supports. That, that make the house as you can see here. It obviously adds a lot of detail. I've explained this in previous tutorials. Again, if you want to go and watch those, there is a uh, playlist on my channel that you can use and probably annotations on the screen right now. But the next step is to kind of expand the platform so that it can fit in what we've uh, what we've built onto the platform so that these wooden out, out jutting things, I don't know what to call them. Uh, these wooden logs that are jutting out from the main supports are obviously not just floating in the air because that would be a bit weird. So yeah, now we've done that, what we're going to do is start placing down... I just failed at opening and closing a door. But what we're going to do is start placing down the fences for the corner detailing and also placing down fences for the windows. As you know, uh, that's how I work in most of my Japanese builds, if not all of my Japanese builds that I've done so far. In fact, I have done that in all the Japanese builds I've done so far. I've used fence fences as windows because it looks a lot better, in my opinion, than just glass. And it really fits the kind of style and the fact that 
these kind of builds are meant to be medieval so it fits the theme and style overall and is very good but I'm moving on straight to the next step which is placing down as you can see here some oak wooden slabs that jut out from the platform to make the platform even bigger to support the slabs that we're putting to cover up kind of the bottom half of the wall because otherwise there's a bit too much wool and it also gives a lot of depth to the house overall. You also place it on the top half of all of the top woolen blocks as you can see and that will give the house a lot more depth and make the wool a lot less garish. That's the word I'm going to use for it, garish. That's the reason I came up with that design. Anyway, after a bit of time changing and weather clearing, we are straight on to the roof as you can see here. What you need to do is make a kind of rectangle on top of your building that you've made of oak wooden planks just to start off as the main body of the roof and then straight on to the next step which is going to be the corner detailing I can't really explain this in words so you're just gonna to have to watch the video to figure out how that works but obviously this is how you do it and then you kind of line the edges of the roof to extend it a bit more with oak wooden slabs as you can see I'm doing here I'm doing the corner detailing as well you can rewatch that if you want to if you get a bit confused because I'm quite practiced with these kind of uh, corner details so obviously what I, I, I do it pretty quickly and just to finish off the roof what you need to do is place some oak wooden slabs in a rectangular pattern like this fill in the middle with planks and place on top of those planks slabs uh, just so that the middle of the roof stands out compared to the corners because the corners would kind of be the thing that draw your eyes to the roof and you don't want that to happen you want the middle of the roof to be what your eyes are drawn to this roof isn't like my other Japanese builds but that's because it's a very small build so it that's the kind of roof that this kind of build uses but anyway straight on to the next step as you can see we are just putting some fences around the outside of the the bridge just so that you don't fall off uh, as I said earlier you've probably done this differently to me because you adapted it to your landscape if you've done it the same do exactly the same as what I'm doing I like to connect it up with those outward facing logs because it looks good but yeah do the exact same as what I'm doing if you did the same uh, if you didn't make sure to just put some fences so you don't fall off and yeah the next step as you can see I already started doing this uh, I went into the creative imagery to get some torches is to just place torches on the outward facing logs where avail where they are available uh, as you probably can tell I didn't place them on the fences the, the ones that have fences connected to them because you can't do that yeah that's just to light up the building and then the next thing you need to do is go inside start doing the interior by placing some oak wooden stairs two torches up there you can light it differently if you want to but I find this is the optimal place to put down your torches get some brown carpet put it on the floor as you can see I'm just getting it from the creative menu here and I will yeah, I need it. I'm getting a flower pot as well because I use that to decorate this inside of this house. You can decorate it differently, but I find that this is a really cool kind of little setup that you can have going. And I also like using birch saplings because they they kind of look the most bonsai of saplings in uh, in Minecraft. So just put a flower pot on that little slab, put a birch sapling in it. It's perfect. It's very simple, but obviously you can do that differently to how I did it. And that is pretty pretty much the end of this little tutorial. After this, I'm going to be giving you some cinematics. But the final thing you need to do just to finish it off and make sure it's not floating above the water is put some fences in every single corner of the bottom of the house. Obviously, this makes it uh, not float above water and makes it actually make sense uh, through physics. If you want to make it floating and make it high tech, feel free to do that. But I like putting fences just so that it makes sense. And yeah, that is about the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm just going to follow this with some cinematics that I'm going to be doing. Hopefully you enjoy the cinematics. And anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.
comes the music. Boom, 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 boom. I'll shoot you right down. Boom, 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 boom.